as Dr. Lee looked at people with exceptional dentitions, he realized that he had to have some model for treatment for his patients that needed care. And so instead of trying to reinvent the wheel and come up with his own best idea of, of what that treatment should be, or to mimic what's done with dentures where we look at worn out dentitions with flat teeth, Dr. Lee looked at nature. And when he looked at nature, he found some commonalities. The first thing he saw was that the jaw joints were stable. That means that the, the jaw joint is comfortable and secure. The chewing muscles weren't in spasm or painful. They were comfortable. The periodontal tissues, that is the supporting soft tissue and bone, were healthy and stable. The nerves to the teeth were comfortable. The teeth weren't sensitive or aching. When the patient bit together, they had an even bite, and that means that there was simultaneous contact of all the teeth with equal pressure. And with time, there was very little wear, and that resulted in the teeth having just beautiful aesthetics. Well, as Dr. Lee observed these patients, he came to the conclusion that there were three principles that, these, that each of these patients possessed, and let's go through those. The first of these is a stable condylar position, and, and to discuss this, I just want to give you a little bit of anatomy. If we take a close look at the joint, the part of the lower jaw that fits into the fossa on the underside of the skull is called the condyle. Between those two bony parts, there's an articular disc that acts as a cushion, and when the patient's muscles function, when they close to swallow, that contraction brings the condyle up into the fossa in a position that with these patients is stable and comfortable long term. So that's our first principle. Our second principle is what's called anterior guidance. Dr. Lee, being a biologist, took meticulous notes and found that if you looked at the upper and lower front teeth, you found that there were very strikingly similar measurements for the lengths of the upper and lower teeth, for the amount of horizontal and vertical overlap, even for what we call vertical dimension, where you measure from the gum line of the upper teeth to the gum line of the lower teeth when the teeth are together. And what he found was that when the patient functioned, that the upper and lower front teeth guided the jaw home to a position where all the back teeth hit at the same time, and the condyle went back to that stable condylar position. And by doing that, it protected the back teeth from wear. If you look at this from the front, the cuspid teeth also acted in lateral movements to protect the back teeth from wear. And that resulted in our third principle, which is natural genetic form. Because the teeth don't wear, they maintain the shape that they had when they erupted. What Dr. Lee found is that when the patient closed, even the shape and the fit of the back teeth sent information to the muscles and joints that this was the correct position to close into and that maintained that stable condylar position. If you look at this system then, there's information coming from the muscles, from the joints, from the supporting tissues of the teeth, all sending information back to the brain saying, this is the place to close. So at the same time, you have that stable condylar position you have the front teeth guiding the teeth home, and all the back teeth hit at the same time with equal pressure. As he studied those exceptional patients, he realized that the patients in his practice that did not possess this exceptional dentition had big problems. And one of the things that he saw was that if the back teeth did not hit at the same time that the condyle went to that stable condylar position, if there was an interference between those back teeth, the jaw actually had to move to avoid that interference. And the problem with that is it's, it's a great adaptation to avoid a, a, a painful interference, but there's a big price to pay for that. When you do that, the condyle has to come down out of the fossa. That destroys the relationship that those upper and lower front teeth have, and it ends up causing wear. Since the muscles have to do extra work, that hyperactivity results in pain and spasm, and the, the movement out of the joint causes inflammation within the joint. So in essence, you end up losing the first principle, that stable condylar position, and the second principle, the anterior guidance, just to avoid that interference. He concluded because of that that the best rule to follow in treating patients was to simulate the tooth relationships found in untreated, non-traumatic, long-lasting natural dentitions. 
As Dr. Lee looked at nature, he saw these relationships.